Good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making an 1880s bustle and train. Alrighty. So we're going to start with cutting the train. I have this silk that was a plaid and I have dyed it. It did not dye very evenly so we're going to re-dye it in a bit. But we're going to cut it first because I think what's going on is there's too much fabric to really dye well. And I think if I do it in pieces, we'll get a much better result. We're going to use a Truly Victorian, um, it's a later butterfly train one. I think it's 1889. I don't remember. 1886, something, something like that. But it's um, the butterfly train. Two yards. And 11 inches, so it was this much long. And I need it to be 21 inches but times 2, which is 42 inches in width. Could you give me a little bit of extra fabric? I could probably just leave this in here, but I don't think I will. Perfect. Alright. Now that that's a smaller piece, I can go ahead and dye that one in just a minute. But that's the back. Let's figure out what the front it looks like. Let me figure out how long this is so I know how long to cut it. It is... Um, probably the same length because it looks like it. Yep. About the same length, maybe an inch longer. Now I have extra fabric, which can be for waistband. Um, we'll need that in a minute. Wait, does this have a waistband? Hooks and eyes, I'm going to assume so. Yes. Yes, there is. Do I not have the waistband? Do I not print that? Fun. Okay. I'll have to find that and I will cut that when I find it. Um, first, let's take this to the side. We're going to fold this in half. Sometimes with these massive patterns, it's easier to uh, cut your fabric into sizable chunks before you cut them out. Looks like it may be a little bit short. But that's okay. We'll just, it'll be a little short. That is like half an inch. That's going to be fine. Well, a little over half an inch. Like an inch. That's not a big deal. I can fudge that. I'm going to cut all the way up here. Fun thing about trains and vessels, they don't have to be exact with that. Because you're really just breaking them anyway. But I'm going to go find the pattern for the waistband and we'll come back to cut the drapery bit. Alright, so this is the, not the train, but the bustle part, the drapery bit. So, I am using the Truly Victorian pattern again. So, this one is the asymmetrical drape, drape on that goes with the four gore underskirt that I have. Looking at the directions, they want me to put this directly on the underskirt, but I already have an underskirt and I don't want to attach the bustle to it because I want that to be a more versatile skirt. So we're going to make the drapery on, on completely on its own and hope it works. It should. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, um, yeah, there's that piece. We're going to do the back now, which I believe is like 39 by 30. And I'll need a waistband for this too. We have a lot of waistbands to wear. Um, this was scrappy bits that can be used to cut a bodice next month. Okay, so I have the back here. It's all pieced now. So we're good. Um, I'm currently trying to figure out, because I'm not doing the base skirt, how I'm going to compensate for, where is it? This big old gap. Uh, cause that's where the back piece would start. So I don't know if I just leave it there and have the lace come up and have a space without a bustle, which I think would be really cute. Or if I add a piece there. I think I'm going to go with the first option. But I haven't fully decided yet. 
But I went ahead and marked the pleats, so we're going to go ahead and pull those up. I feel like, well, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I have to do this to the front as well, and then I get to sew the front and the back together at the seam. And that will catch the pleats and make them look all nice. Well, they do quite frank. I think it would actually look better if I stitched it then did this, but this is what the pattern says. This is what we're doing. So here's the back ready to go. Set that aside. Now we're going to do the same thing to this. But I actually have a pattern piece I can mark this on. Now there's another question because I was putting lace on the bottom of this. I really do feel like I need to hem these first and then do this. And I'm just going to do the up and down the front. But I think I should probably turn it under and hem it first. I'm not sure how much of a hem was allowed. The only answer on the pattern piece is one and a half. So half an inch turned under and then another half an inch. I can go ahead and do this and then um, we'll come back and finish it off with the lace. Excuse the absolute disaster of a sewing area, but we're sewing on lace. Alright, now we can bleed it. I almost said it plainly and said, you know what, no, this is the 80s. We do things kind of frilly in the 80s. I think I ought to hem this side first. So, this goes right here. In case I need to hem this side. And then the other side goes up. Alright, so bustle has been gauged and I stitch on a waistband by machine. We're going to uh, fold over this edge of the waistband and um, then whip it to the other edge of the waistband to kind of cover this raw edge. Make everything nice and neat. And after that, the only thing we'll have to do is putting on hooks and eyes. So at this point we're past the point of machine work, everything's going to be done by hand. Just very quickly whip that together, looks nice, and we will have a completed bustle. And I think while I'm doing that I'm going to dye the fabric for the, or re-dye the fabric for the train. Alrighty, and kind of sewing in the waistband. Last little bit of the waistband. It's just occurring to me I forgot to put the train in the dye pot, so I will be doing that as soon as I'm done with this. I've also decided I need to line the train. I didn't have fabric that I wanted for that, so I had to order it. It should be here tomorrow. So I'm a little bit behind schedule. But it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, now to do eyes. That doesn't belong there. Now to do this. Eyes, and then uh, dye the fabric and all that. It will be um, well on our way to having this done. So we're gonna cut out the lining. Lining came in quite a bit more red than I was expecting. It looked a lot more maroonish online. That's what I get for shopping online. And I don't know if the new babies have been on the camera yet. But we got two new kitties. This is Cayenne and his brother Chili. Um, they are named such because they were feral cats and we used to call them spicy because they were not very nice. Little feral babies that were found um, at my fiance's fort. And <laughs> there was actually three of them. One of them unfortunately passed away before we could get to them. We got them, domesticated them, and so now we have the spicy boys is what we call them. So, of course, we had to name them after spices, so we have cayenne and chili. All that means is that we now have, like, four cats. Which is about three more than I wanted. Most of them are going to go end up being barn cats and live a happy life, you know, chasing mice and getting cuddles occasionally. So the big middle piece, which is the center back, attaches to this side because it's the longer side. And then it kind of fans out and gives me a nice curved edge. 
on either end. So I have two of these pieces. I got to iron the other one now. But there are two of the lining pieces now. All right, so I have here the lining, the fabric. I just stitched the sides together, um, and I went ahead and hemmed it, which I just did a. Um, oops, that wasn't supposed to come out. I just did a a hem. I probably should have bound it, considering that's what most originals look like they do. But I had to dye a whole new set of fabric or re-dye, and I just couldn't bring myself to do that. It was just going to be a lot of work, and I don't have a lot of time to do that, so here we are. So I marked where all the pleats go. Did they go up or down? I also looked at a lot of originals and have come to the conclusion that um, having kind of a plain set hem like this is going to be unusual, so I'm going to do a ruffle. I think I'm going to do the ruffle in the green. Because I have seen some originals with the, you know, the trains a different color than the skirt. And so they did a, um, a ruffle of the skirt fabric on the bustle. Or in the train, really the train. So I'm happy. So I'm going to do that. And uh, so I need to cut some green. And I also need some sort of little ruffle. I'm calling it a dust ruffle. I don't think that's the official term because I think a dust ruffle is different than what I'm thinking. But basically, it's going to be like a, basically what a facing is, but it's going to be pleated. Because apparently, well, they call it ruched. So we're going to ruche it, but that's basically just pleating. All right, now we have the center pleats. So I pleated up the sides, and this is going to be the center. So I think it's going to be easier to do it this way. I have this marked girly because I just need to know where to sew exactly. But these pleats go up, if I remember correctly. And then we'll go ahead and pleat the waistband and put it on the waistband. Um, and then we'll work on the hem and stuff separate. Alright, so I have the waistband on, pleats, I just did little knife pleats, center to the center back, and kind of left a larger pleat at the end, <clears throat> put on a waistband, and I'm just stitching it on. It's basically going to work just like the uh, cotton bustle that we made, that back end that flips over, it's going to be like that. I think before we work on the hooks, we're going to go ahead and make the ruffle it goes on the bottom, stitch that down, and do the little um, ending thing. <laughs> um, or the little, the little lining thing that goes on the bottom that protects everything. That thing. Alright, back to the train. Um, we're going to put ruffles on the thing. It's just, um, I'm going to do the dust ruffle first. So what I did is cut four inch strips of white cotton. And I have a pinker here. I haven't used it in a very long time on the channel. Um, in fact, I think it was parasols the last time we did it. And that was probably close to the beginning of the uh, channel. This is not a period pinker. It's actually a modern one used for taxidermy. But it works. I have a friend with original ones. But I don't have an original one. But you know what? Once it's done, it's very hard to tell that it's not done by original. Truly, unless you really know what you're looking for, you can't tell. It's just a cool effect. So, if you really look close, yes, those are scallops, but the little things in between are really Van Dykes, they're points. Whereas originally they would have been scallops. So it would have been scallops inside of scallops instead of Van Dyke's inside of scallops. So this is going to get pleated up in uh, just a moment. And basically, uh, I'm tacked in. I think we're going to do the ruffle, ruffle, the trim ruffle first. Put that in and then put this underneath it. And this is going to keep the ruffle and the ends of the train from getting you know, really ratty. 
And Susan looked it up for me because she has a reprint of an original dressmaker's guide from the Bustle era. And she told me that I, I could also narrow him this. She said, narrow him to scallop. And I was like, oh, I have a scalloper. That sounds like a lot easier job than to hem it. All right, so we are putting a ruffle on the edge of a bustle. Um, so basically I just plated this exactly the same way we plated the skirt ruffle. I figured they're, you know, matching set, so they should probably go together. And I'm just taking the edge of this um, train. I guess it's not a bustle, it's a train. And I'm pinning the ruffle, which is just, um, again, same as we did with the skirt. So it's one inch knife plates with two inches behind each plate. So for every three inches of fabric, it makes a one inch plate. And that's basically what I'm doing. And I'm just going to lay it on top, and um, as I sew it, then um, I'm going to sew it by machine, just like I did the other one, and then I'll sew by hand the ribbon on top of the seam, like I did with the skirt, so it will all just match. And then underneath this, of course, we have the dust ruffle. So I'm just doing this all at once. I don't know if that's right, but I'm just doing it all at once. So I have the dust out poke myself with a needle. And I have not ironed these plates. Um, I figured I kind of wanted them to kind of poof out a little bit. Alright, but kind of just been sitting them here and then wherever there's a pin up here I've just been pinning it in place. It's not exactly very precise. I figure it's a dust ruffle, it's not supposed to be precise. And with how little I'll wear this dress, I'll likely never replace this dust ruffle. So I figured, go ahead and sew it on with the actual ruffle. Oh, I think I really would have been sewn on separately. Just tacked on. And then I'm just stitching this down by machine, about half an inch from the edge. Just like we did, again, the other ruffle. With the skirt. So it'll all match and be pretty. So I'll stitch that on all the way up and then we'll come back and just do the ribbon by hand like we did before and the train will be done. It'll just be trimming again the bustle that we talked about. Oh, and we got to add hooks and eyes. I think we, do we add hooks and eyes to this thing? No, okay, I got to add hooks and eyes to the bustle and, or to the train and, well, let me rephrase that. We're putting the eyes on the train and the hooks on the bustle because this is going to attach to the bustle. And then I can take it off if I ever decide I don't want to wear the train. Alright, here's the ribbon that is just getting tacked on just like I did before. Just to the first layer or so of, this, of the ruffles. Alright. Do one more little stitch here. There's that. That means the train is well no, I said do hooks nice, don't we? Okay, let's do that. And I think I'm gonna do the hooks on this side. I think I misspoke last time. I'm gonna do hooks on this one. These are the ones that are open. These are the ones that are open. Okay. I have two packages and one's open and one's not, and they always stay together, so I never know which one's the open one and which one's the not open one until I actually get in there. Okay. I'm going to make this hook stick out a little bit and I'm just going to do one on either side. That feels like it should be secure enough. Probably should be using a black thread since I'm going up this um, this red. So the eyes will go on the train itself. Or sorry, the bustle. This is the train. I keep getting my parts mixed up. Um, but the eyes will go on the bustle so that this can attach and uh, then deattach as needed. All right, so um, hooks are sewn on. I had to think about what we were doing. And um, let's work on the florals. So on the very corner, I sewed one floral and some ribbons. And we're going to do the other one, which is going to be up here, where basically the front and the back meet. So I made the floral arrangement, which is basically just you know, a bunch of wired florals, and I 
you know, twisted the wires together. And that's going to fit basically like right here. So I don't want it going down, not to the back. There you go. I went like that. And basically, I just kind of started sewing. You make little tack stitches. Kind of attaching the stems and just holding them in place and do that in lots of places like a lot of places especially kind of towards the center okay and i have these ribbons i need to put and i think we're gonna put this first set like right in here i'm gonna stitch that down wherever my needle went to and again, it's just basically putting up the needle, putting it across a um, stem or something just to hold the florals in place. And then as needed, I can move these um, leaves and such to kind of hide the stitches. Basically, it's like sewing on bonnet florals. You want some degree of movement, like you don't want to seriously like, tack this in. But at the same time, you do want it to be secure and not fall off. Especially if this is a ball gown and then I'll likely be dancing. Falling off is not something I want. Took me a second to find out where that one would go. Okay, that I kind of want to stay up. But I'm going to go ahead and tack down this big stem. And you can see how exactly so precise all of this is. Cool. There it is. So let's go ahead and get on a corset and a skirt and try all this on. Here we are. So I have on the skirt, well, I have my 1860 chemise, my 1860s corset, because I am showing the house, the house is for sale, and I don't know where everything is right now, so this is what I could find. And then my 1880s um, bustle petticoat and skirt. So now we can put on the bustle, the like overskirt bustle, and the train. And I think what's probably going to be easiest is to attach the train to this first and then put the whole thing on at once. I'm also wearing the uh, shoes that I bought for this dress. So they have heels and I still don't wear heels. So this is going to be lots of fun figuring this out. Okay, that is attached. Let's find out how this works. I'm going to kind of move it down so you can like, see my waist a little bit better as I put this on. Okay. This is the first time I've ever had to do this. Okay. So, okay. And then this needs to like move around somehow. Without hopefully moving the whole skirt. It would be so much easier if someone else is doing this for me. Okay. Okay. That seems a little bit better. I know there's an under part to this. That should be like, oh, there it is. That should be like going that way. And it still probably needs to move a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's cute. I mean, as far as bustles could be cute. And then there's that side. It's a very long train. This is going to be a lot of fun to figure out how to dance in. Okay. Let's see if I can put it down even further. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun to try to figure out. <laughs> it's so long. Okay. Okay, now I see why people in the court had somebody else come fluke their train for them. Where's my fiance where I need him? Okay. Ah, train. It is quite lovely actually. Very lovely. I do kind of wish this would, we might need to put a hook and eye like right here so it doesn't 
cover up the floral because I hate to cover those up. Those are really pretty. But that is the 1880s train and bustle. I'm gonna like put it down a little further. And I'm going to take to walk. That's fun. It is really quite pretty. And I do like when I turn, oh gosh, I'm stepping on it. When I turn and it kind of just turns with me, I, I kind of like this. But, oh gosh, I'm stepping on it. Okay, can't walk backwards. That's, that's going to be something to figure out. a whole new thing to have to learn how to do. Okay. Ha. Huh. Okay. Then I can turn. What I might need to do is make one of those little hook ring things to like hold up the train while I'm dancing. I guess that would be something I could do. But aside from the bustle or issues doing the train or training, I actually rather like this bustle. This is quite nice. The florals are just gorgeous. I mean, that's going to be kind of annoying because that's where my hand sits. But I can learn how to put my hand here or here. Right? And that's going to be just, you know, learning. But I love the swoopiness. And I really like the asymmetrical look with the florals down there this time. And I really love how this bustle does it connect. Look at what extra threads in here. Hey, that's a parasol um, fringe. I know parasol this belongs to. I will put that back later. But I love how it doesn't connect because then you can see the beautiful pleating of the skirt on the very bottom. And I really like that. Like, because it's very well hidden. You can see it on this side a little bit, but I like how even though it's asymmetrical, you see that on both sides. I really do like that. And the train is just, I feel very regal in this train. Very regal. Learning how to walk in this is going to be a lot of fun. But, oh gosh, I kind of, I had to walk in it. I had to dance in this thing. Is that possible? I mean, it's got to be, right? Like, this has got to be a possibility. But, yeah, that's going to be loads of fun to figure out. I guess I'm going to need more practice. That's just all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to need lots of practice. That's really nice. I like the effect of that. But it kind of pulled around the floor and it's hard for y'all to see. Y'all can see back here. Where it's all bustled up. And I don't even have to wear the train. Like, if it became far too cumbersome and I haven't had time to practice, I can always take the train off and just wear the bustle. But I actually really like the train. I'm going to squish these flowers. I really am. But other than that, that is the bustle and train. And I think they turned out gorgeous. I am super excited about it. And I'm excited to get to finally wear it and dance and have a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today as we made our bustle and our train and decorated them and had all that fun uh, 1880s goodness, all the things that make the 1880s the 1880s. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I know I don't do a lot of 1880s stuff, but we do a lot of earlier 19th century things, like 1820s through the 1860s, and sometimes the 1870s and 1880s. And next year, we're going to start a little bit of 20th century stuff, because my fiancé does 20th century, and I like, would like to join him at things. So I need to get that wardrobe together. That's going to come next year, but probably only once a month. Most of our stuff's going to be 19th century, because that's really where my heart is, is most of what I do. So this will never be a 20th century channel. It might just be here and there. Oh, I have this project I need to get to. But um, all that being said, thank you so much for joining me. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.